what did we see in the aftermath of September 11, 2001? Immediate action on all fronts. The Patriot Act was uh, passed here in the United States without public debate, without any debate by Congress, just passed. It's a frontal assault on the Constitution. Attorney General Ashcroft moved aggressively after the attacks, expanding the executive branch's legal authority. Our assault on terror, our war on terror, allows us to justify and legitimate a whole bunch of things that I think are pretty scary and frightening. They can come into your home or my home, plant listening devices, take documents, photograph documents, tap the phone, and not tell you about it and get away with it. Right now, as we talk, the Fourth and Sixth Amendments to the Constitution to the Bill of Rights are dead letters. Despite being a U.S. citizen, Jose Padilla has been held indefinitely in a naval brig in South Carolina. He's never been charged and hasn't seen a lawyer. This administration has, in effect, repealed key sections of the Bill of Rights. They've actually suspended habeas corpus in their Patriot Act. They have made indefinite detention possible. All of these things should be of the gravest concern to Americans. And yet it's being done all under the guise of fear. We have to do this because the terrorists are lurking behind every door. Today the Justice Department did, did issue a, a blanket alert. It was in recognition of a general threat we received. Uh, this is not the first time the Justice Department have acted like this. I hope it's the last. But given the attitude of the evildoers, it may not be. The more we're afraid, the more you ask us to give. Patriot Act II, enhancements to the Patriot Act. Now the budget's starting to be bankrupted. Billions flowing out of this country into, into a war on terror. More defense expenditures. And therefore, I've asked Congress for a one-year increase of more than $48 billion for national defense, the largest increase in a generation. Perpetual war, the loss of civil liberties, uh, uh, the lack of trust in government because they don't tell the truth. These are outrageous and unpleasant political developments, but they don't necessarily spell the end of the United States. Financial bankruptcy does. To maintain the Bush administration's war doctrine, Massive increases in military spending have been required. The United States now spends more than $400 billion annually on the military, seven times as much as the next biggest spender, and nearly equal to what the rest of the world spends combined. Such vast expenditures on military machinery and war, together with the largest tax cuts in history, have driven the Bush administration's record budget deficits. They have also been responsible for deepening the national debt, which by the end of 2004 figures to stand at over $7 trillion, more than three times the size of the debt of the entire third world. Foreign countries hold the notes on about one-third of this unprecedented U.S. debt. That money must be paid back. And that means somewhere down the road, Americans will pay taxes and get nothing. Debt is reaching forward to future generations, taking their wealth, bringing it onto current account, and spending it. It's like if I mortgaged my home and used the money for crack or something, just some expenditure. Eventually, you're going to lose your home. The image and the rhetoric is tough America going it alone. The reality is in hoc, in debt America begging others for money. The cowboy stopping occasionally with the horse, getting off the saddle, going to the Western Union, and wiring money to the rest of the world is not in a lot of western films because it doesn't seem super cool but that would be our cowboy our cowboy is going to have to hop off that horse periodically by the way the horse that he won't own and make payments to whoever does own the horse and the saddle and the gun and the boots and the hat and the basis of u.s economic strength today is the fact that the dollar is the reserve currency all over the world that's a political phenomenon now if tomorrow and I think it will occur tomorrow or the next day, uh, these countries decide that that makes no economic sense for them. It never made political sense, but it makes no economic sense for them. Then the U.S. goes down the drain. I mean, it really goes down the drain in terms of a real reduction in standard of living and so forth. Over the next few years, if the neocons get their way, we're going to see increased money for the Pentagon, increased tax breaks for very wealthy people, and fewer dollars that are going to go to education, housing, health care, and other basic, uh, basic needs. 
things that can't go on forever don't. What we're talking about right now is the rigged American economy can't go on forever, and it's not rocket science to say so. In a lot of ways, U.S. power in the world is collapsing. What these neoconservatives are trying to do is to compensate with military might and muscle and force what they're losing in terms of economic control. I'm a war president. I make decisions here in the Oval Office uh, in foreign policy matters with war on my mind. They are people who want war uh, forever. And this makes them much more like uh, fascist movements than it does like conservative movements.